Many people dream of running their own business. It sort of dawned on me this is what I should be doing. As soon as I saw it, I wanted it. But the reality is often a nightmare. You should not be in business. It's not easy. I'm Alex Polizzi, a small business owner myself. When you've got a small business, you have no free time and you have no spare cash. This year, I'm trying to find fixes to the big issues that make thousands of firms go bust. You should be thinking on your feet. Oh, you come can... on, we don't have long to prepare. We'll do it anymore. With almost one in three failing in the first three years... Losses are between 10 and 20 grand a month. Small businesses face massive challenges. If we don't make those payments, the house goes. Home truths. I hate your shop window. All I have heard about is you bitching and moaning. And hard times lie ahead. You ripped my <laughs> off, out. But if these companies succeed... It's not just a business you've given me back. It's my confidence. Then Britain will boom. <laughs> this time, getting your product right. 69 tables out here, and about 12 of them being used. Things have moved on, and I don't have the ideas anymore. Will inaction... What are you going to destroy while you try to change something? No more excuses. And bloody-minded resistance... It's making me unbelievably uncomfortable. I'm not going in. You're such a control freak. Spell the end for this ailing attraction. Death is my exit plan. Fine. The customer is always right. Vanilla spice or chocolate ready. Thank you very much. But when you have two very different customers, the challenge is enormous. The family leisure industry has to simultaneously cater for both parent and child. And today, I'm off to a small business that's struggling to listen to what their customer wants. The soft play phenomenon is an industry that's worth £346 million per annum, so there's obviously money to be made if you have the product right. Hello, thank you for calling Big Space. Please listen carefully to the following call options. Nine years ago, owners Lester and Sue ploughed everything into setting up Big Space Soft Play Centre in Harpenden. We're here 12, 14, 16 hours a day, seven days a week. We literally have everything tied up in it. It's not just a job for us. The 10,000 square foot space-themed play area was born out of the couple's belief that they could do a better job. When we first set up this business, our daughter was um, six and seven, and we were being subjected to going to horrible play centres, and so that's where the concept came from. Cool. Thanks a lot. Cheers. They employ a manager, Jack. Josh, what are you doing now? And a workforce of 26 young staff. We have clean down lists and they'll, they'll tick to say they did it and they, they actually didn't physically do it. You'd yeah. have thought that a teenager would say they've done something and actually they haven't. Ex-army chef Captain Lester likes to run a very tight ship. Lester is army mentality without a shadow of a doubt. OK, so I'll have a system with that too. Listen, there's a right way of doing things and then there's everybody else's way of doing things. He's a man who likes things to be done his way. How have I ended up with two separate slips of paper with the same order on it? If it's not done that way, you've done it wrong. Things have to be put in the right place, because I'm the one doing the ordering, and when I look on the banana milkshake shelf, I don't want to see chocolate milkshake. The trouble is, you have to be more flexible than that. Things started well for Big Space, but in the nine years since opening, the business has suffered a steady decline. The country went into recession. It was 2009, really. It hit mm. us really, really badly. If it's a sunny day, we may not have anybody in the building. It's, it's, it's absolutely there's, there's 69 tables out here and about 12 of them being used. I, I do worry that I've tried everything that's kind of feasible to try, certainly in terms of, of the building layout or the money spent on the equipment, those kind of big, big things. We had to make a lot of staff redundant, which was absolutely horrible. 
spent all our savings, got a lot of credit cards out, spent about 350,000. So if we don't make those payments, the house goes. I have to provide for my family. It's all riding on this. There is no backup plan. The kids, you know, the, one of them said to me, Mum, if you, didn't, you and Dad didn't have big space, what would you do? And it was one of those classic things where I thought, do you know what, actually, I don't know. So it has to work. Um, and I didn't want to get up to If this business is to have a hope, then Lester will need to put the last few years behind him and start thinking differently. I'm expecting a little bit of a clash. He's a lovely, lovely chap, but he's got a very exacting way of doing things and he doesn't really listen to anybody. Lester, Hi. I'm Hi. Alex. Hi, Alex. Welcome to Big Space. Thank you very much. Do you get a headache after working here? The noise day? is fine. What's more disturbing is when there's no noise and I don't get the headache. So your capacity here is about 120 kids. Surely your busiest time is on weekends. By far. All right, well, I'll go and have a look around. OK. Thank on you. my own, All right, without <laughs> you. I'll let you in. <laughs> Currently, Big Space makes on average £1,800 a day. To turn a profit, they need to make £2,100 a day. I have just over three months to help them. So, obviously, I've got my own kids, and so I do tend to come to these places. Normally with a couple of paracetamol in my mind, because it's pretty noisy, as you can hear. Family leisure often comes with big overheads. A cavernous building, play kit and high staff numbers aren't cheap. The entrance fee here is £1 to £8. However, most play centres make their profits from selling extras. It's quite nice. With parties generating up to 30% of revenue. Have you noticed it's got busier or quieter? Or... Whether you are a Disney or a small business, the rules are the same. Customers need to be persuaded to spend more money once they're through the door. And I wonder if Big Space's cafe is encouraging this. Lots and lots of seating. It look a bit cramped in. It may be a bit of a squeeze, but a decent-sized cafe like this could be a cash cow. But that depends on whether what's on offer is right. I hate these red menus. There's no fun about this area at all, and it somehow what they've got to offer doesn't jump out at you. It's also not that kid-focused. Just sandwiches for the parents and not a children's menu in sight. Instead, it's a wall of crisps and homemade cakes which are time-consuming to make and don't turn enough of a profit. It all really comes down to a boss's vision. If the boss gets his ideas wrong, then it's kind of game over. Hi, Lester. Does your offering kind of equate with what other, other people are offering in other soft play? I, I'm not aware of any other soft play centres doing fresh cakes every day. I might be wrong. Um, but n people that come in here say, well, we come here because you've got such lovely cakes, lovely coffee. And do you, who makes the cakes? I make the cakes, I make the cookies. And do you have to make them every day? I'm making them every day, yeah. Do you think that you're letting other areas be overwhelmed because you're concentrating on here? Well, when we first opened, we put teams in and that was fine. But the, the staff costs were just spiralling. So, no, I, I haven't spent this much time in the kitchen before. It's, and it's how, do you have an exit plan for spending so much time in the kitchen? Or do you intend to keep on doing this until there's an upturn in uh, big space fortunes? Death is my exit plan. That conversation's left me a bit nervous. I'm worried that he spends too much time in there, hiding away from the real problems, rather than sorting out what's really going on out here. So. Lester's wife, Sue, juggles her childcare commitments with Big Space's admin. Do you just love this business, or is it just that you were determined to make it work? I think it's a combination of we've invested so much time <coughs> and personal effort into it, um, and neither of us are ready to see that go. And for Lester, 
I think it would be the worst thing in the world if this didn't work and we, we walked away. Do you think Lester spends too much time in the kitchen? Yeah, massively. You know, I think my, my... I know how much we take daily on, on cakes. It is a, a lovely side of the business that people yes, come in. but does it translate into fi financial viability? No, that's what my impression was, but he's so passionate about it, it's so hard I think to he... argue that with him. You know, darling, it's an easy thing to do to hide in a kitchen when everything's not great out front. Lester will always say that he's not a maintainer. He has the idea and he can run with it and he built, you know, I would never have been able to build this place. This was all his, his idea from an empty warehouse. Do you think you're the maintainer then? I try to be, but sometimes it's just, I find it a little bit hard just because, because it's awful. Sorry, don't mean to cap it. I'm sorry, darling. Because I want him to enjoy it. Yeah, yeah of course. And so I feel like a lot of the time I'm putting the kibosh on things because I'm saying, well, the money's not there to do that. Or I'm just, I feel like I'm a negative force all the time. You're the boring one. <laughs> I'm the boring account, you know, sensible. That's always been my label. I'm the sensible one. Um, it's a compliment. <laughs> it's a compliment. So, the play centre is suffering from the absence of a maintainer. And on closer inspection, it shows. That leaves a bit of cleaning to be desired. Every single seam is pretty disgusting. I, I mean, I don't know whether it's lack of funds, recent lack of funds that have slowed down their cleaning regime, or if they've just completely taken their eye off the ball. It isn't good enough, that's for sure. Any small business, especially one in family leisure, needs a clear identity to make them stand out from the competition. And I think Big Space is missing a trick when it comes to the space theming, or lack of it. Attractions like Legoland and Peppa Pig World have grown immensely in popularity. Children like to immerse themselves in a fantasy world, resulting in them wanting to stay longer and the parents spending more on add-ons. Everywhere that seems to be very successful tends to try and make you spend as much money as possible. Do so that's the thing. We've got to think of offering add-ons that you're going to make an incredibly good profit on. Yeah. Every one of those add-ons and making them sure that they're add-ons that people are going to want. If you had the option that, for example, you could, they could have someone into face paint or helium balloons or to charge for photos with a mascot. Yeah. Or any of those things. Do you not think that any of them would work? Face paint. We, in the early days, we did face paint, and we got stuck for a whole load of dry cleaning because the kids ran back on the equipment with their faces painted, and the paint went on the equipment, and then other children got it on their clothes. Helium. We've just kind of stayed away from helium. Costs a lot. You've got to rent the um, cylinders. We've yeah. done helium balloons. We have to rent the cylinders, and uh, you end up with your roof full of helium balloons. What about a kind of takeover? If someone wanted to take over the whole place for a private party, yep. what would you charge for that to make it worth your while? Um, I mean, if you were charging £15 a head like you would normally at a party... No, no, so... so yeah, yeah. Who, are they going to be paying seven, eight £800 for, to hire the place? If they did, yeah. would, you, would it be worth your while? Uh, the, it's not something we've been asked for. Fine. He's just not somebody that's that's ready always to listen to other people's opinions. We can all have ideas and he says that, but he's the one that has to think, is that going to work? And nine times out of ten, he'll say no. We're kind of ready to defend certain things that maybe we've tried or we have already dismissed as, as ideas. Lester's single-mindedness got Big Space built, and I admire him for it. But he does need to open his mind to other ideas or risk sabotaging his own business. Well, this is definitely one of the tougher businesses I've ever had to tackle. So I'm going to have to think hard tonight, and I will start trying to find things to do from tomorrow. When Big Space first opened, there were just nine children's play centres within 20 miles of Harpenden. Today, there are 40. That's two cheese and tomato. 
The first thing I want to do is make big space more appealing to parent and child by enhancing the space experience and introducing a child-friendly menu. So, I'm taking Lester to see a family-focused business that has got its product spot on. I'm here on Piccadilly, outside the Rainforest Cafe, waiting for Lester. This is where we're going to try and put him through his paces, challenge some of his ideas. I can't see him yet, and I hope he's going to turn up. We had quite a tough day yesterday. The Rainforest Cafe is the largest restaurant in central London. Its tropically-themed dining rooms see a staggering 400,000 diners a year and produce a £7.5 million annual turnover. Yes. <laughs> OK. You ready for today? I think so. Let's go and meet Brendan Lucy as the general manager. OK. Brendan. Alex, good to see you again. Nice to see you. you. This is Lester. Hi. First, I want Brendan's opinion on Big Space's menu. To me, it looks yep. very, very corporate -y. And we are a corporate kind of affair here. Right. And yes, my, my menu wouldn't be remotely like I that. I see what you mean, right? yeah. yeah. We were going more coffee shop because we wanted mums to come with the kids, to mm -hmm. visit with their friends, to have a nice relaxing cup of coffee, a couple of cakes or whatever. Mm -hmm. While the children play, they're having a, their mother's meeting. So mm -hmm. we went much more down the high street coffee shop. OK, I understand. I don't think that people come to Leicester's place to have coffee. They come for the children to play and then they eat because they're there. Mm -hmm. And I want to make sure that they spend more money there and yeah. that they in, uh, spend as much as we can possibly extract from them in the nicest possible sure, way. Sure, sure. But by encouraging that spend, and I don't think that this encourages that spend. It doesn't encourage uh, staying longer than people would want to. Consider like that, that uh, you know, mum could come with her kids and th if, if your little Johnny gets hungry, they may leave to feed them. I'm open, I'm open to, okay, well, to, to feedback, one, yeah. Right, here's yeah. my one. And, and, and the kids' menu is at the back here, right? And, you know, it, it's, it's, it's all within theme, OK? Yeah. It, it, the the colours are within theme. Mm -hmm. The things I want to stand out are in strong, bold colours, yeah. whereas, whereas you, you've gone exactly the opposite, opposite way around. There's nothing child-friendly there. You have a theme. Right. Yes. Yeah. And 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 if you have a theme, then you, you might as well run with that theme. Yeah. Right. Yeah. In my menu, I've got you know chachas, meatballs. I've got Ma uh, Maya's meatballs. I've got chacha this. I've got bamba that. These are all the names of our animals. Right. Everything in rainforest is a theme and it's a parlance. So I don't have waiters. I have safari guides. People will come for the entertainment and think, wow, the food's great here. The key to boosting revenue is to add cost-effective and easy-to-prepare meals to the menu. The chefs here serve over a thousand meals a day, an achievement that's down to a pre-prepared system. We can do, like, sometimes nearly two and a half thousand covers a day. The hard work is done in here with, with apportioning out portions so as that it fits rightly into the composition of the meal, yep. which fits rightly into the food cost. So I know in advance exactly how much money I'm spending on each meal. Mm -hmm. I know what I'm getting for it, so I'm able to predict profits. Here, preparation is accurate to the gram and calculated to keep pace with constant demand. With his catering background, Lester could easily cook up a dish like this at the beginning of the week and leave his unskilled staff to heat and serve. The most important thing is that it doesn't take up an awful lot of space. No. I mean, there's about 20 portions in this yeah. right now, yeah. right? You have space in your fridge for this. If it's prepped by the right person, Alex, then it can be served up by somebody that isn't exactly a fully trained chef. Because, you know, while you're in the kitchen, I hate to say it, you have no idea what's going on no. the front. No, no this is, and this is, that's you know? such a good idea, Doll. Mm. I love it. I'm a fan of pasta because I've never met a child who doesn't like pasta. Sure, sure, that's right. I mean, it's, it's just a little That child hardly exists. Yeah. Brand new. Right, it's all very well you saying, you can pop that in the fridge, but I've only got one fridge, and I can't fit another fridge in if I could afford another fridge, so there's, there's lots of things that I've got to, I've got to filter down and, and, and take from there. It's difficult to be told what to do when you've invested your money and your time and everything, and he's a lovely guy, but he'll be a lovely guy out of business if he doesn't, if he doesn't listen. That is the truth. Yeah. OK, then, so Chef. The final simple assembly for a meal like spaghetti bolognese takes just 90 seconds and is well within the grasp of Lester's young staff. All right, Lester. Right. Pasta in order. 
I'm timing Sauce you, Lester. <laughs> and to prove how easy it is, we're putting him to the test. Pasta goes on there. All right, yep. Yeah. All right, Dalton. Okay. 15 Good. seconds. All right, let's put it up <laughs> there. there you, go. you like that? Here we go. Okay. Lovely. There we go. Well done. How well long done. did that take you? 90 seconds. You produce that in your restaurant. You keep the child happy, you keep the mummy happy. Yeah. What Lester's got to remember is that the success of Big Space is not because the mummies love his coffee. Absolutely. That's secondary to the child being happy. They, Absolutely. The fact that they can get a good coffee is a bonus. But it ain't the name deal. It's a model I want Lester to replicate at Big Space. Menus like they were suggesting won't work here, and I don't think they're particularly necessary. I haven't got a team of chefs like they've got. I haven't got a full range like they've got. Um, I, I, I don't even have a hot cabinet like they do. My kitchen isn't suitable for spaghetti bolognese. What is he actually thinking when he says something like that? It's so knee-jerk, that reaction. He's such a control freak, because the idea didn't come from him. He can't possibly find he could do it. We're going to do the fish fingers and the chicken. Instead of a nutritious, well-balanced meal like pasta, Lester is going for a fish finger sandwich. It's not ideal. This is a snack, not a meal, and won't command a high sale price. It looks so unbelievably cheap. Hi. Would you be willing to try one of our new ideas for our menu? Is that nice? Did you try one? It's a bit dry, but yeah. I didn't have any sauce. So. That's all right. Good definitely, boy. Definitely catch up. The fish finger one, definitely more in the wrap. So definitely away from the bread kind of stuff. It fills the children up too much, yeah. I think. They eat the bread and then they just don't want to eat nothing else. Right, so the feedback that I've had is that a lot of it's been quite dry and really bready. I think they wouldn't mind it in a sandwich, but I think they would prefer it, you know, outside of the sandwich is what I'm, okay. what I'm trying to go at. What I'm thinking of doing is having columns so they can choose to have it plain in a sandwich, in a wrap, with wedges. Fine. It's not, a, not a, a, a problem. Good. Lester may have created a dish that his staff could cook up, but fish finger sandwiches aren't exactly high value. At least he's responding to customer feedback. It's Wednesday, the one day of the week that Big Space is closed for cleaning which gives me a chance to refocus my attention on another important issue. I completely appreciate that, first of all, this is a warehouse, and so it's a quite a difficult space to clean, but somehow you've got to find a way to do it a bit better. The reality is, if people are unhappy with something, most of them will never complain. You only get the lunatic fringe that complain. Yes. Um, and the others just vote with, with their feet. Yep. They just never yep. come back. It's a 10,000 square foot building. It's an awful lot of cleaning. So it's on a, it's on a program. It's on a rolling program. Things get done at certain times in the week. So things get done at certain times in a month. That's a, a, an excuse. That's not a reason. I had it as a reason. OK. I wasn't convinced at all by the excuses of it being a big stage. Lester's the one who decided to set up a soft play centre. Now he has to maintain it. And he has to maintain it better than he is currently. I'm certainly not going to shy away from challenging Lester's resistance, but I will need some specialist help with my next plan of action. Carl McKeever is a retail consultant for big brands like IKEA, John Lewis and Sainsbury's. Lester has ploughed over £400,000 into this place, so it's unrealistic to expect a complete overhaul. But I do want to see if Carl can enhance the customer experience and commercial performance with a more space-focused theme. What the customer really wants here is, is to understand what's to come. So you need to have good navigational signage, you need to have a real strong call-out around each of the different areas. Yeah. And as I scan around here, I see this kind of random mishmash of miscellaneous information, different styles, yes. different t tone of voice. It really reads as nothing. It's not an appealing entry. What the children want is just these great big call-outs to say, I want to go here, I yeah. want to go here. Actually, all I see is really empty chairs and a very big open space. OK. Shall we go through? Great. 
I really like all this. It's fun. So, look, as, as an idea, it's great. But I think then beyond that, I think this has got more of a female feeling. So I think, you know, almost for boys to come into this kind of big pink and orange palace is not quite so inviting. It's not entirely clear who this is targeted at. No. It's a little bit scary. I think it's got a very poor adjacency, but also this blocks the view through to the parents as well. Lastly, I'm keen to hear Carl's opinion on Leicester's beloved coffee shop. Whilst it's really important to have an area which you know, speaks and is more comfortable for the adults, it shouldn't feel like an entirely separate place. So I think there needs to be a bit more cohesion with the, the overall space theme. All businesses need to ensure that the product they offer is for the right people in the right market, otherwise they will fail. Because of its split customer base, Big Space faces a tougher challenge than most. Using the space theme, I want Carl to come up with some new, innovative designs. Overall, I want to give this place a complete facelift, but I think, you know, we need to get the basics right yeah, first. Absolutely. The main thing for me, for my personal happiness, is yes. the cleaning of the equipment. That's not a problem. You know what needs doing. So, you know, the cleaning of the equipment, it's, it's on a daily sheet to be yeah. done. Yeah. What I have to do is to make sure the staff are doing it. I'm I know, not, darling, but it. you're the boss. Exactly. No, I know. You're you know, right. But it's, it's your it's, job it's to do this. OK. Finally, yes. I challenge you to go to some very good competitors. I want you to go and see <laughs> at least three, darling. Go and get some ideas. Go and compare prices. You don't have to undercut people. You just have to make sure you match your competitors. Yep. I'm not back for a couple of weeks. OK. So you've got a couple of weeks oh, to okay. do this. I'll get 14 this. days to do this, do I? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I, think, I think you should be grateful. If a business doesn't understand what product the customer wants, the majority of them will simply seek an alternative to have their needs met. It's imperative that Leicester and Sue know what their closest rivals are offering, so I've arranged for them to meet the owners. She's not good, not happy. Well, you decide, darling. If you don't want to go in, I don't want to go in. It feels wrong to go into a competitor that was established after us. No, I'm not going in. No. You can go in if you want. It's too humiliating. It's, it's too embarrassing. I've, I've clearly got pride, and I'm prepared to work hard, and I'm prepared to take guidance, but I don't want to have my nose rubbed in a peer's um, version of what I do. There's nothing I can be shown that I can't be told. No, we're not going to turn big space into this. I'm not going to change any colours, I'm not going to change any food. So to, to come here as Mr and Mrs Big Space and say, oh, we're having trouble, tell us what you're doing, is making me unbelievably uncomfortable. Well, you're going to be in such trouble with Alex. <laughs> Well, I hope I can find the words to explain it yeah. to her. And she's in business. She's a businesswoman herself. So maybe she'll understand it. Maybe she'll, she'll certainly get an idea of where I'm coming from. It makes us sound so bad, though. It makes us sound like we're not prepared to, mm. to accept that anybody might have a better way of doing no. things than us. That's right. No, we'll, we accept change, but there's a, there's a fine line between arrogance and pride. And, and we're pr proud of what we've done. Our staff are proud of what we've done and what they're doing. They'd be mortified oh, if we went God, into Oh, God, if they yeah, found out we'd gone into that one. Mm. No, no. Two out of three company execs won't change their mind once they've made a decision. Why? Because they think they know best. According to an American survey, this is known as the cost of ego and is the major reason behind bad decision-making, costing a company up to 20% of annual revenue. The more we thought about it, the more we realised, do you know what, this, this is just wrong. Sometimes, though, you have to just go in and have a little look, because obviously they're doing something right, because they've got all our customers, what makes people go to them rather than well, us. We don't know if they are or they aren't. It's, it's strange, isn't it? Because a few years ago, when you had, you know, Ross and Maddie with kids, you would have probably gone in there to play. Yep. Now we don't even... No, I have a clue, really, apart from when we look online. What's that, that one? Why was that on a two-minute timer? Right, I'm going to get a plate. I, I can kind of see where he's coming from, because I know how stubborn he is. I think sometimes it can kind of affect his judgement. 
I think he should kind of go through the doors, maybe talk to some of the people in there, see what the, you know, what their views are on our place and why they're here, not there. Nearly five weeks in, and I feel I'm no further along than when I first arrived. So, last time I was here, I asked you to go and check out some competitors, mm -hmm. and you struggled with that challenge, didn't you? Yes. Tell yes. me why. Well, to go and see an equivalent seemed not a very practical way of doing things. I'd like to go and see somebody I aspire to be like, somebody that I probably i am not in the same league as, and something that I would like to kind of really fight to be like. Um, and, and to just go to a nearby rival just didn't seem right. Was it a bit Tell embarrassing? Yeah, a little bit of ego came in, probably. Listen, darling, I don't blame you. This is a very yeah. painful thing to do. Yes. This is not an easy process. Yeah. I'm not minimising it in the least. No, no. Yeah, I'm, so. I'm not sure you've ever been to a business that's as personal as this one. Everywhere you look in here is a decision I've made. It's something I've built, it's something I've sourced, it's something I've painted or constructed or repaired or I'm maintaining. There's nothing in here that doesn't come directly from me. I get that. However, okay. we don't have that long together and so I kind of want to c cut the crux of the matter. Yes. Um, as quickly as possible and start finding solutions for things. Yeah. Yeah. yeah? I do feel sympathetic towards Lester and his predicament, but there is no point asking for my help and then refusing to consider any of my suggestions. I'm bringing back Carl McKeever with the new space-themed designs. I just hope Lester is ready to embrace this change. So, we worked from the basis that themes really work with children of the age group that you're attracting. It um, really sparks their imagination. Hope you like it. Do comment. I know you will. I have no doubt. <laughs> OK. Uh, over to you. So, first of all, we want to create you with a really strong presence as you arrive in the car park. OK. When we've done that and we bring them into the environment, what we propose to do is a floating ceiling raft which will hang pretty much above the whole reception area. Okay. And so actually when you stand at the reception area, mm. you get the, the sense of looking up into the universe. Do you like all the planets and everything? There's an awful lot of dusting, was my very first thought. <laughs> we have a lot of problems here with dust. Yes, we know. Um, and, I, I, yeah, we need to know how that works and how we can easily get them dusted. Next. So with the climbing wall, we propose to leave it in its current position, yeah. but actually to redecorate it in the same design style. What we then have is the existing rocks that are on here, which become our meteorite shower. Yeah, yeah. And with a site across the top, which is our moonwalk or spacewalk, then we really start to give that area a presence in its own right. We're firmly in that kind of place now where I'm not sure that that would make children play on it any more than what we've already got. But I've got nothing to lose. It's just reinforcing, reinforcing, reinforcing. I mean, whether you're climbing in it or not, it's going to be a wall of big planets. Yeah. So I love that. The space theme has also been incorporated into the cafe. Around the place, you can see here a lot more use of your characters and all of the sort of space aliens, etc. I'm only thinking at the moment, do you want to be sitting in a playground with your coffee? Well, what I think is ultimately, you know, it's like we're parents. As long as your kids are happy, yeah. you tend to be happy. Yeah. We don't want it to feel like a different entity. Mm. We want it to feel like it's one unified theme so that people are very clear that they're getting that whole big space experience right. throughout it. Finally, we have devised a fun way to market big space. We put together this photo opportunity board for you for perhaps when people are leaving and they've had a great time here and it's just something to finally do on the way out. You could then offer to email it to them, free, gratis and for nothing, and that means you then capture their email address for further marketing. We've tried taking emails before and people don't like it. But I don't like it, darling, but I still do it. Yeah. I think we do need a database because it gives you people to approach. You know, this is just the foundation. If it's happened to leave you with the hard copies, then you can scribble on them, make any additional comments or whatever. That's, That's great, because then I can take those away. That's brilliant. Can I get my shredder? Oh, gosh, I'm leaving here so frustrated again. Everything I suggest um, has always been tried, or Lester doesn't want to try, and uh, it feels like uh, it's one step forwards and then two steps sideways and probably a step back again. Ah. 
Every business, big or small, has to adapt to a changing market. Otherwise, their product can become dated and shunned. This can mean reinventing a tried and tested product. This year, a record number of independent bookshops closed, largely due to the cutthroat competition of Amazon and eBooks. Even high street chain Waterstones nearly went into liquidation in 2011. To survive, they needed to drastically change their business model. Their new strategy? To give customers a broader, more immersive shopping experience. They upgraded their 300 stores and dropped the apostrophe, started stocking stationery and games, introduced coffee shops, and even teamed up with their arch rival Amazon to sell Kindles. Who's next, please? Having lost over £37 million, they are now generating cash once again. Waterstones are still here because they adapted for their customer. Something other high street chains weren't quick enough to do. I'm really worried about how Lester and Sue will react when I bring him in here. But ultimately, I've got to confront them with the reality of what they're risking. There's no point taking an aspirin for a raging temperature. You need more than that. And I just think that he's got to stop making excuses for the place failing and accept that change is what's needed. So, I have brought you to these less than salubrious surroundings to present you with what happens when you lose relevance to your customer base. Blockbuster was, you know, the, the big thing. Mm. Everyone rented a video from here, I did it myself. Mm. Then, you know, they were slightly slow about adopting DVDs. And then by the time they'd taken on DVDs, they'd already gone bust once. And someone right. bought them again, thinking they could turn it around. They started renting out games. What they hadn't understood was that the whole way that everyone was watching television, watching movies, playing games, was completely different. They were downloading from the net um, and they were sharing. They thought that they could just keep on doing what they were doing and sooner or later it would come right. They had this immense belief in their product. Despite declining sales, they always thought that somehow or other they could just about turn it round. I don't want this to be you. You've got to stay relevant. You've got to stay somehow... Um, sorry, Sue. Sure. I, I hope I haven't upset you. No, no, no. It's, it's, it's the reality of the situation. That I think we started it however many years ago, understanding the market, understanding what parents wanted because we had children that age. And I just think things have moved on. And I don't have the ideas anymore. I think that's what frightens me, is that I don't have any answers or any suggestions, so I end up... I'm listening to you, but I, I don't feel I can contribute. I think, you know, we all feel that, that it's just like the world is moving on so quickly. I just think we've got to somehow make a real effort to kind of freshen up, change the offering again. You've got to be brave, and I know you keep saying to me, I've tried this and I don't believe in that and I don't want to do... You know, and I just think that somehow there's, there's not enough momentum. And I feel that I have got to say this to you because I'm going to feel very guilty when I go and I will feel like I haven't done my best for you. So I just feel like no more excuses. It's just whatever has got to be done has got to be done and it's got to be done very quickly now. Yeah. Mm because this is the alternative, and I don't think it's a pretty one. <sighs> well, I found that really hard. I didn't enjoy it at all. But I hope I finally got through to them properly. We'll see you tomorrow. She's obviously thought, if we change something radical, then we can turn it around. Yeah. We can't bigger. do the little things. Can't do the little things, because it's felt like we were just going to do little things. Yeah, very much so. Well, it's because you would only agree to the little things. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know what won't work, you know, I know what we've tried. Well, you think you know, but it's true, isn't it? There are things that we've tried that we would rule out now because we'd already tried them. Yeah. But maybe they would work now if we're coming at it from a different place, I don't know. But then what are you going to destroy while you try to change something? Are you going to foul up something that's working OK now. I don't know. 
I don't know. <laughs> No change is completely without risk. But inaction is a far more dangerous game. I think that it would be good for you to have a different perspective on things. Because I, I, I live and breathe this place, don't I? This is, this is designed from ground up. By me. I don't think it's always just that, that um, because you've chosen it, you don't want it to change. It's, it's that you don't want it to change. Mm, yeah. So to have somebody else's ideas actually implanted might be a bit of a turning point for you. I don't know if you'd find it quite freeing for somebody else to take that rein just for a little bit. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I think I probably would, be, just because of the trust. Three weeks later, and my pep talk seems to have made an impression. So tonight's the first evening of the um, refurb. Cut it. I must have spare ones of those. After some compromise, Lester approves Carl's designs. It shows it's been long overdue for a bit of a spruce up. Unfortunately, the hanging planets and aliens in the cafe didn't make the cut. But at least we're making some progress. Wow. It's blue. And Lester seems happy. Wow. I'm confident the refit will be more in keeping with what its customers want, but only if it is kept clean by the staff. One of the things that I really have noticed about here and that I'm not very comfortable about is that the cleanliness in general yeah. isn't good enough. What has to happen is that Lester and you have got to walk the space properly every single day, noting down what has been done, what needs to be done, what is not satisfactory. I know that everyone's given jobs to do, and yeah. it's a tick box thing, but unfortunately, darling, you have to it's check. It's not working out, no. I've never had any kind of formal training, any help or any guidance for this job. I've yeah. literally come straight from uni, thrown yeah. straight into it, yeah. and I'm kind of going from what I've seen before. Yeah. And there's some aspects of business that I'm not too sure on, I think the thing is, it's quite hard to be a manager because you have to be quite confident about telling people where they're going wrong. You need to keep everyone's spirits up, but you also need to crack the whip a bit. And I'm going to be encouraging you to do that, and I'm going to be encouraging Lester to do that. Otherwise, there's just no way to make this place work properly. During the day, Monday to Friday, we are bored and we are just working through our list of jobs towards the end of the day. That is it. No drive, no motivation, no kind of ethic to kind of work together. To equip Lester and Jack with the necessary management skills, I'm taking them to a company that is world-renowned for its staff training. pret first appeared on the London High Street in the mid-80s. Today, its 350 outlets turn over £500 million a year. Six years ago, they achieved their goal of raising the quality of customer service with a groundbreaking training academy. Good How to see you. you. Very good, thank you. Ian, head of the Pret Academy. Small firms can learn a lot from larger ones, and I want to tap into Pret's strategy at their brand new academy in South London. So, first of all, how do you instill the Pret way into all these staff? So, what we do is bring people to this academy, and on average, people come through the academy at least two days of their Pret career every year. What's the kernel of the Pret philosophy with your customers? Well, it's all about fantastic customer service, and um, the way we do that is actually having a mystery shopper program. Mm. So, all of our shops every single week receive a mystery shopper guest. Gosh, every, every, week. every single week, which is. Every <laughs> shop, every, every week. It's a every huge week. investment, as you wow. can imagine. Every single team member has the opportunity to earn a pound an hour extra for every hour that they work if their mystery shopper visit is successful. Gosh. And 88% of our shops achieve that every week on average. Managers are also bonused on the mystery shopper as well, well so it's not just the team okay. members. Pret believes it was the good training of their staff and managers that helped the chain increase profits throughout the recession. What do you think is a manager's role in particular? 
Well, the managers are completely accountable for signing off their team members' training. It doesn't mean that they're physically holding the hands of the team member while they're doing things like coffee training, but they are accountable to put their signature at the end of everybody's training. So ultimately, if somebody does mess up in the future, then the, the general manager of that shop is wholly accountable for their people. Ian wants to observe how Lester and Jack operate as managers while teaching a group of prep students how to make the perfect coffee. I don't train. You know, I, I expect Jack to train the guys. Um, I tell him when something's new, if you get a new piece of equipment, I show them how to use it. But I, I'm not good with training. Just keep in mind that this is not about you training people how to make a coffee. It's about you and how you approach a training exercise. And it's about hopefully concentrating your mind about the level of enthusiasm and energy you need to bring to the task. Over to you guys, good luck. Pretty sure on these machines and stuff, yeah? Never seen one in my life, mate. Okay. <laughs> uh, watches, uh, uh, rings, you're all okay. You're perfectly yeah. okay. Spot on. The aim of the task is to assess the type of manager they are. A little bit of theatre, a little bit of drama. How was your holiday? <laughs> <laughs> I like that. <laughs> Only then can we learn where they might be going wrong. So I really like what Lester's doing over there with these guys because he's doing a bit of one-to-one -one coaching. You can notice when he's steaming the middle, he's holding their hands almost there. That's it. And push it out of the way. We're going to crank it up. Yeah. Jack, sort the noise out, mate. Yeah, so we're going to need a little bit more milk in there. With Jack, it's a bit hit and miss. You know, there's two trainees that are a bit in chaos, so they're not working together, and he should be doing that one-to-one, -one, really. And then we're going to lean it back. Perfect. Perfect. There you go. Beautiful. Now, if you crank it up now, it's really good. Mm. He's got enthusiasm. Definitely. I love. Cup going on. 3.34. Spot on. Oh, oh, we have a winner. We have a winner. That's really beautiful. <laughs> OK, so Team Leicester, the one-to-one -one element was perfect, so well done. Did you think he gave them enough independence? I think actually it was a little bit smothering at times, just mm. occasionally. So actually really a bit too hands-on. You know, maybe letting them turn the steam off on their own rather than you jumping right. in to do yes. it, which is a natural thing to do. Yeah, it was hot enough. It's hot enough. <laughs> yeah. 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 But, you know, Are you saying I'm good? controlling? Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. it doesn't come up very well. <laughs> and he's only really just met you. What's yeah. 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 Team Jack, you've got a very nurturing personality, and I think that shone through. Very you've got their attention. And if you had that one to one element with each trainee, I think it would have been bang on the money. Okay. I know you have a process of rewards and that you have your mystery shoppers, but, you know, integrally, how do you think your managers keep teams enthusiastic? Simple things like playing great music in the kitchen. That's a really simple motivator in the kitchen. A band in our kitchen. Yeah, well, there you go. I know what it's like to own a business, especially a small business where you're multitasking, yeah. you're doing everything. You know, what you need is a system for yourself to make sure that nothing gets missed off. And I feel like that's something that you could easily improve on. I mean, you've definitely both got the skills necessary to do it. It's just kind of, there's always something more important to do, but really nothing's more important than making sure that your staff espouse your philosophy for your customers. Definitely. Okay. Okay, and in true prep training fashion, there's a little reward for everyone for doing such a great job. So well done, guys. Yeah. Help yeah. yourself some prep goodies. There's a love bar for the lovely team Lester. Go, yeah. Thank you. Right, guys, quick meeting. Inspired by their coaching, back at Big Space, Jack and Lester are quick to act. So, Jack and I picked up some tips on training. We're really going to kind of drive that home now and, and, and start afresh. And for everybody to understand that there are, there are things that we are expecting and there are things that we're going to be checking. It's going to make working here better. It's going to be uh, more enjoyable, more productive. So um, we've got a lot of work to do, but it's going to be fun. And yeah, crack on. Smashing. Thanks, guys. Grab mops, buckets, scrubbies, sprays. Just, yeah, just go nuts. We'll get it done. Make sure you brush the net as well. Yeah, you can see it. A re energised workforce is now behind Big Space. Time to hit the streets and start promoting. They can come in free of charge, they can sample our new menu, they can see what's going on. Cool. Over the years, it's been the clients on the Harpenden doorstep that have given up on Big Space. Big Space, we're relaunching tomorrow. So, to lure them back, Lester and Sue are throwing open the doors for a free relaunch party. Free entry, so if you wanted to come along, you're more than welcome. Everyone's seeing it. Come and see, and yeah, the new menu's inside. It's a good idea if they get the day right. 
as many as 96% of unhappy customers don't complain, and 91% of those will simply leave and never come back. It could cause more harm than good, especially if they haven't taken on board a new children's menu and other add-ons. I think the overwhelming feeling I have with Lester is that we could have got a lot further, a lot faster, if he'd got stuck in sooner. I feel like most of the time it's like trying to push water uphill. And then, you know, we finally achieve something, but it's about a quarter of what I wanted to achieve in double the time. Today is relaunch day and my final visit to Big Space. It'll be my first glimpse of the revamped interior. The first thing customers used to encounter at Big Space was a wall of corrugated iron and billboards. The new reception now entices children's eye lines to the space-themed interior beyond. I love the fact that you have really clear sight lines. I definitely like that. So you're kind of enveloped in the world from the moment you walk in. The space theme creates a more fun, immersive environment that children will love and remember. Although I think Lester was wrong not to allow the theme to continue into the cafe's interior. The climbing wall does reaffirm the intergalactic look. It does really work. Yeah. It's a lot clearer than it used to be, yes. I think, the yeah. climbing wall aspect of it. The entire toddler area has been restyled in a vibrant, optimistic blue. And to improve sight lines, the toddler house has been opened up with new windows. I like the fact that it's kind of lightened up the whole area. Yeah. Oh, my gosh, look at the difference. <gasps> And at the 11th hour, Lester's added new family-friendly hot food options to his transformed space menus. I wasn't going to fight you on that one. But you're being kind of very generous-spirited today. Have you taken some new medication? <laughs> <laughs> We're at the end of the road, that's all. He's also introduced child-friendly bento boxes. Those look great too, darling. This could be the key to customers staying longer and spending more money. I'm kind of <laughs> amazed. I really didn't expect quite such a change. In any business, customer satisfaction rests firmly with the boss. I'm glad to see Lester has finally taken this on board. But is it enough? There's been a lot of discussion between us about who the customer is. Yeah. You know, is it the parent? with the coffee shop idea? Is it the children with the theme idea? Yeah. Ultimately, we have to please both, don't we? Yeah. Because, um, you know, they come as a package. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so I'm hoping that we will have proof positive that we've done a good enough job. To gauge the success of our efforts, I've devised a test. So what could be easier than green is good, red is bad? Hopefully it will be an immediate signpost as to whether we're doing what we should here. But half an hour after the party begins, things are looking decidedly quiet. I don't know whether we've done enough, I don't know whether they've done enough. I'm worried that the Harpenden mothers and fathers aren't prepared to change their opinion of big space. But 30 minutes later, there is a late surge. We make all these ourselves. They're available to buy at the servery. And it's nearly full to capacity. Lester and Sue's promotional push in Harpenden has clearly convinced the locals to give Big Space a second chance. There we go. We make these all ourselves. <laughs> oh, did you? Yes, we do. This is now their chance to shine. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, thank you so much for coming to the Big Space relaunch. Hubble is there for photograph opportunities and hugs. Three, two, one. And to prove the profitability of Pester Power, I'm trialling some fun add-ons. There's face painting down there if Florence wants some, and there's someone doing balloon stuff. Oh, oh there we go. So, ladies, do we have our vouchers? Lester has also devised some clever offers to entice people back in. OK, 
So these are for use in the May half-term holiday. Two for one entry, two pounds off entry fee, free slice of homemade cake or cookie. It's a great idea. I hope there's lots of take up. I just hope we've done enough today to make Big Space the customer's place of choice. Fabulous venue, really clean, it's really well thought out. When we'd come here before, the choice of food was a little bit limited, whereas now there's um, sort of hot food, which my daughter loves. So, I think you'll agree it is overwhelmingly positive. Are you quite happy with this result? I'm happy yeah. with the result. It's, it's always going to be unsettling that somebody has taken the time to pick up a red ball and put it in, because it, it just seems a little petty. What we've got to remember, though, is, is all the people that picked up the, the green balls, the positive balls. Today, let's just celebrate the fact that we made over 100 people happy. <laughs> I have been repeatedly frustrated by Lester's resistance, but if he continues to challenge his own constrained points of view and understand the benefits of customer satisfaction, then he's on the right track. So, my dear, you first. Oh, <laughs> thank you. Stay involved. Yes. Keep an eye on him. Yes. Don't, you know, keep on pushing him. You, you can't be trusted on your own. <laughs> <laughs> you, you've driven me mad at times. Good. Very frustrating, Good. but I hope we're parting friends. I think we are. And honestly, I didn't expect half of what I found today. I'm really pleased and grateful that there are as many changes as there are, and I hope they work for us. Thank you. Now as ever, it's down to Lester and Sue, and Lester needs to stay out of the kitchen long enough to force through the changes. If he can do that, I do think that Big Space has a bright future. I've always considered myself a builder and not a maintainer. I, I construct things. I constructed Big Space, and I, had that, I tried to have that feeling of, there, it's done. I think I've learned in this process, do you know what, whether you like it or not, you are a maintainer. This is not something you can complete and, and, and leave. It's a nice idea, but it's not going to work. You have to maintain it, you have to adapt it, you have to change it. And, and that's, that's my wake up call. Lester had already invested heavily in the infrastructure here, so we were only ever going to be able to improve the edges of this business. But, ten weeks on... Lester has seen the benefit of add-ons and hired a children's hairdresser. The promotional vouchers are proving a hit... We gave out about 100 or so. On the day of the free cake, we had about 40 come back. So that definitely tapped into something that people are, oh, I love that. And Jack stepped up as manager. I wasn't checking up enough. I wasn't doing enough to make sure the guys were doing what they were meant to. Whereas now, the whole place is getting done over every single day. Big Space's success was always going to be down to increasing numbers and customers spending more money once they were in. In the two and a half months since Alex has left, our visitor numbers have increased by nearly 3,000, but the spend per head has gone up by 5%. That's, that's fact, it's there. If this is maintained, then the future looks promising for big space. Oh, my God, my hopes are high.